Good evening, everyone. Trying out a new lighting setup here, and I feel like this is a little too intense. Give me one hot second. I'm gonna move this while Rachel joins us here in a second. <clears throat> We'll try that out. See if that's a little better. Maybe, maybe not. Get some light settings you can adjust here. It's weird because like the YouTube tries to like auto adjust with the webcam and stuff like that. Anyway, hopefully it looks good enough. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Hi everybody. It is uh, May twenty seventh. Appreciate you joining us here. Rachel and I talked. Start about me. Just a little bit. Well, I, I wanted to start before nine, because if I don't start it by nine, then it gets that weird thing where uh -huh. it like doesn't do it. So anyway, here we go. Um, Rachel and I are going to try to keep it more to a half hour tonight. We're tired. A little tired. Yeah, had a long day. So we're gonna we're not going to hit everybody's questions, but we'll do our best. Said my hair just gets better and better. <laughs> Patrick Dempsey, it's starting to get uh, McDreamy. A little bit. It's getting out of control, especially in the back. Yeah. Rachel's definitely not digging the the mullet that's starting to form. Shipping is progressing nicely. I think we saw some of May's orders starting to ship out. So we We're getting there. Um, getting we keep there. adjusting our calculator. We will be caught up by mid-June. Uh, based on our best projections at least, but a lot of April's orders have shipped. Um, they're still working on them. They're, they do them in different batches. Um, I don't know if you talked about this last week, but um, the way things are pulled, like maybe all the FedEx at once or everything that's in a large tote or, um, you know, different things that, or people working different shifts and we're trying to only have stuff on their own table. So, you know, not everything, uh, you know, goes out every single day, but um, we're adding more and more people to the office. I think we have six or seven people there simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Now we're having to figure out like sharing bathrooms and things like that. But um, yeah, they're making a great dent. Uh, they're working really hard. Um, and yeah, I think we'll be caught up by mid June and then we'll be back to normal, which would be uh, good. An adjusted normal. An adjusted normal, like normal shipping turnaround times. Um, obviously most of our team will still be working remotely. Um, you know, only those who have to be in the office will be, but yeah. Yes. Um, got a few good questions here. Um, Heidi got her orders shipped. So that's pretty cool. Looking forward to opening them. Are Edison pens American made? Yes, they are. They are made in Milan, Ohio. Yep. I've seen it with my own two eyes. <laughs> we have, a, we have a video. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as detailed of a like manufacturer tour video as like Lamy, for example, but definitely been there. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, Sharon is, uh, they're inking up a new Lamy 2000 <laughs> right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, let's see here. Hey, you carried us. Awesome. It's really cool to see all the shipments start, uh, getting out to you guys. Yeah. All like the new stuff that we launched that mm -hmm. we've been waiting for. Getting all your safari candies and the carried us and all the sailors because like we literally launched that the day we shut down. So yes, indeed. All the Innovas. Yeah. Yeah, got a good question here about, um, can you take a Lamy Vista, put a rollerball body in it and eyedropper convert it? Um, I believe you can do that. There's some nuance about it. I there can't is, remember there's that. a nuance, I can't remember what it is. I think I've read that you can do it. I think I may have tried it for myself, but not been able to do it. I think there's something about it that it's just not, it's not seamless, but. The new brand will be launching in mid-June once we're caught up. Um, it is a luxury brand from within the U.S. Still happening. Uh, luxury in the U.S. Uh, they're all priced in the four-figure range. And that's what I'll say. It's not for everybody. It's a luxury brand. Yeah, but it's still pretty cool. It's pretty cool. If you like art on your pen basically. Uh, Garcia says, got my Monteverdi Innova shipped with APC yesterday. That's one of our international shipping methods. Um, have you had any trouble with APC shipping to Canada? Heard some bad reviews about this company. We have not had any bad We've reviews. We've been using APC a... for, how, that's our standard shipping. Mm -hmm. um, we used to use like USPS First Class International, but APC has better tracking. USPS First Class basically 
had non-existent tracking and uh, took longer and was very problematic for, for us. So APC is kind of a shipping consolidator. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still we, using U.S. mail. It uses U.S. mail, but they have better logistics um, through the system. So uh, we've been happy with it. Um, I know a lot of our Canadian customers have been happy with it. Obviously, if you have any specific issues with your package, let us know. There are, I will say, internationally, a lot of delays right now just because of COVID. Um, Customs is really backed up. Like everyone's ordering online right now. Um, And, you know, with different ports shutting down, things like that, just things are delayed. So I think international shipping just takes a little longer than normal right now. So patience all around. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Monteverde Ritma <laughs> asking about stock of that. I don't know if you have any Yeah, we, we sold out of a few. Ken, what do you, what, <laughs> I saw you in here. When are we getting more? Um, I don't know. Restocking now has been a little tricky. Um, it, so we are, of- we are trying to restock everything. Um, and there's a couple things we kind of, I'm going to say let run out of stock, but we prioritize certain inventory during our downtime because, you know, just trying to watch um, how many shipments we can handle at the house and our cash mm-hmm. and things like that. But um, we're now reordering everything. Just some of our vendors were shut down during this time um, or yeah. the manufacturer was shut down. So there's kind of a lag there. Well, the so. whole supply chain has been disrupted. The whole transportation industry is being disrupted. So right now we're just, we're not able to predict the same delivery times and, and all these things that we normally would be able to across. Oh, all do you have the um, arrow? On you. I was just thinking, I just saw that question. We got a question yeah, about we, the arrow So we pink. just today, as a surprise, we launched um, our exclusive, oh, Brian, you got a weird pop-up on here. Oh, that's because I just plugged in my phone. We launched our exclusive Diplomat Arrow Antique Rose. Um, <laughs> some people on social have said it should have probably, uh, another name would be Millennial Pink. It is very Millennial Pink um, or, you know, blush pink, but it's a really pretty, I'll call it ballet pink. Um, with Chrome. Well, Matt, Ken, Chrome Ken's Chrome. in here. We can give him a hard time because I think he came up with the name. No, I think Diplomat did. <laughs> oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. It's a little shiny, but. Oh, light, Crystal the was saying the bottom leaks. I think when you do the uh, Vista conversion. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. I knew there was something. You got to epoxy like the hole in the bottom. That's what it was. That's what so it was. this just launched today. It's a Goulet exclusive. Um, we'll call it a special edition. We just did like a single production run. Um, theoretically, we can we could order more. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really pretty. And I have a broad with my name on it, not literally, but figuratively, um, <laughs> in the office that Brian's going to go pick up for me tomorrow. That's right. Got a this very fine. satisfying cap. Oh yeah. I love the Diplomat Aero caps. Mm-hmm. One of my favorites for sure. All right. Let's see here. I have not been overeating during self-isolation. If anything, I've been eating less just due to all the stress and anxiety. I've lost like 15 pounds <laughs> since quarantine began. I have uh, not. I have been overeating for both of us. All the ice cream. He comes home from the grocery store with like all these gallons of ice cream. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. That's the guilty pleasure right now is ice cream. Uh, the Diplomat Arrow <laughs> is available in different colors. Um, probably like at least eight different colors now. You can check out our website. The pink yeah. is just the new one. Do we know of any affordable architect nibs? Hmm. Nope. No. Not a one. There's no one that makes them from the factory. You have to get it custom ground. So is it possible to swap nibs on the arrow? Uh yeah, it's a standard number six Yovo nib. So you can they don't have replacement diplomat nibs, but um, you can put a Goulet nib on here. You literally just pull it. It's in there kind of tight. So you do you twist it or um, you have to kind of like pinch <laughs> it and like rock it back and forth a little bit. It's a little hairy if you haven't done it before. I just was laughing because someone said you gained 15 pounds in hair. Probably. <laughs> I look like I've gained 15 pounds just because of that. I said it, it's not helping you look slimmer. <laughs> it's not adding to just my adds overall to your smallness. Presence. Of I'm a, I'm a sizely individual. Yeah, a goulet grip would be very helpful. For goulet grip would be better. Or if you're like me and you just have thumbs of steel. You can just Crystal, stuff. our goulet grip cutter. <laughs> Chime in the comments. That's right. Crystal's been cutting up plenty of grip from home. <laughs> there you go. So, yes, you can get it out of there. Once you get it out the first time, it's a little easier there on after. Um, so, yes, it is possible. Yes, he is related to Robert Goulet. He is his seventh cousin once removed. That's right. So there you go. He literally is. They trace back their lineage like the 1600s. Um, no, there's no news on the Lamy Studio Special Edition that typically comes out in the fall. So I wouldn't expect to see an announcement on that until the fall. They're pretty tight-lipped about, about that. Yeah, you can use a Goulet nib on this pen. It's a number six. So there you go. 
Um, a number of people make comments about having to adjust nibs of new pens they've just received to get them to write properly. Is this necessary? Um, this depends. It depends what you consider, you know, write properly, because a lot of times people have preferences about how things should write, and they just maybe don't prefer the way that one manufacturer will adjust it. Um, so there's a lot of kind of custom tweaking and stuff like that you can do with nibs. What I consider to be not writing appropriately is like if it's scratchy or if it like doesn't flow well and, and, and that kind of stuff can happen. Um, but uh, I would say in general, the vast majority of pens that we see actually do write okay. Just some people prefer them to be a little bit wetter. They prefer them to be a little bit smoother or whatever. And so the adjustment that's needed is somewhat more of a preferential thing than it is like a non-functioning, you know, uh, manufacturing defect type of situation. So most of the time when we get a pen test request, which happens from time to time, 97% of the time we test it and it's perfectly fine. So, I mean, most, yeah. most everything writes well out of the box. I think there's just some preferential things that some people have. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. That said, it certainly can happen that you can get a pen that needs to be, you know, adjusted a little bit. But if, if you know how to do it, it's not, it's not complicated at all. But it's not, it doesn't happen enough to warrant us proactively doing it on every pen, not even close, because otherwise we'd have to raise the price on everything to accommodate for all that labor. Because you can imagine how long that would take to open up every pen, test everything, you know, it would just be too much. A lot of questions coming in. What um, okay. I just saw one at the bottom. I like, what can you do if a glass dip pen is too fine? Can you use sandpaper? You can. Yeah, I would recommend using a very fine, like a wet sandpaper, at least 600 grit, maybe even higher if you have anything higher. Um, like a micro mesh would actually not be too bad. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have to do it a lot, but then it would be pretty smooth. Um, if you go too aggressive with the gold, the glass pen, you can get it really fat and you can't go back. You can't make it finer. So you want to go really slow with it. But yes, you can you can use sandpaper and get it to write thicker or smoother. The finer the sandpaper you use, the smoother it's going to be able to write. Oh my gosh, all these questions just came in. Um, there's another one, right? Just scroll back. Do we, miss one? Uh, do we have the Twisby special edition with you so we can see the color for it? Um, no, it's it Don't. did. I think it arrived to the office today or tomorrow. Um, it's launching on Friday. Um, but we don't, we don't have it on us. So that's the uh, Twisby 580 ALR Prussian Blue. Um, I am very curious to see it for myself in person too. I need to make sure that I pick one up when I go to the office tomorrow. Like, for I yourself. My list. Yeah. There you go. Brian goes in once a week. Like everyone's kind of on a different schedule. Yes. Um, your Lamy converter has shimmering ink particles stuck in the black end piece. Do you know how to get it out? In the black, like on, on the tip? Yeah, you can, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you might be able to get it out of there just by covering, filling it like halfway with water, putting your thumb over it, shaking it like crazy and dumping it out, doing that a few times, may or may not get it out. Um, but that black piece is just pressure fit in there. You can actually pull the black piece out and then you would definitely be able to clean it out. Um, what I've used before is I've used a paper clip and I just kind of like straighten out the paper clip and then I create a little hook on the end. I just kind of bend it maybe with a pair of pliers or something. Um, and you can create a little hook and then you can just you can just pull that thing right out of the end. Will we be restocking Graph Fun Faber Castell pens and inks, or is your relationship with them sadly over? Rollouts are easy to track, like new products, missing the closeouts to help me keep track of the inverse. It's a good question. Um, no, our relationship is still great. Um, we were just kind of taking a pause on the brand. Um, they had some product changes, and we just weren't ready to pick up the new the new things they were coming out with. Um, but we're still in contact with them, and the the doors kind of open when we when we're ready to pursue that mm -hmm. again. So yeah. um, it's not right now but i i don't have a date but um it's something it's possible it's it's not like a you know a sour relationship or anything yeah. um how does the girth of the pilot custom yurushi and the namiki yukari royale i guess compare debating which one is smaller to get we do have measurements on our site we do have a new product compare feature so you can like compare and it brings up the tech specs of everything so i am 90 some percent sure we have measurements for those on our site to compare. Um, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember offhand. Which... I don't have either of those on me, so I can't show you the cuss. I will say the custom Yurushi, I think the cap itself is, is going to be bigger. You know, the um, it's, it's an all resin pen versus the Yukari Royale um, is going to be brass. So it's going to be heavier. So the Yukari Royale is going to be a heavier kind of denser feeling pen 
not quite as much girth, especially on the cap as the custom Yurushi. I think the custom Yurushi is gonna be a little bit lighter pen to write with. So it's gonna be a matter of preference um, as to what it is that you, you are kind of looking for. Do we have the Traveler's Company limited edition green pen with us? Can we see it? Um, I have not seen it in person yet, um, but it's the factory green. It's the brass pen, but with a green. And the green is kind of the color of like their warehouse shelving in the factory. So it's a special edition thing that they're doing. Um, I imagine we'll have them in the next couple of weeks. I believe they are on the way from Japan right now. Mm -hmm. um, will, we be, will we be carrying the rainbow crescent filler? Yes, the Conklin crescent filler in a rainbow, which looks really awesome. Awesome. That, looks wild. that will be here. I want to say like June, July timeframe. Um, someone asking if we're going to ever consider subscription boxes. Um, we did years ago. Um, we actually stopped it in 2016. It was four years ago that we stopped doing it. Yeah, I believe you it. You also have an eyelash. Got it. Um, <laughs> Not a lot of eyelashes. I, well, a, a, a rogue. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's something we could consider. I mean, honestly, because I know there's there's demand for it. There, there's a lot of issues with subscription boxes. Um, I know when we did one, we had a lot of churn, like people didn't stay members long. Um, but That's it's always like trying to get something that everyone likes, they don't already have, oh but they gosh. feel is a good value. Actually, and honestly, our biggest issue is just the inventory supply. side. Yeah. Um, say we have a thousand members, like having to get a thousand of something or a thousand different things or mm -hmm. catering to different preferences. It's such a logistical beast. It's almost like a whole nother business. So it's not off the table. Um, but it's not anything we're pursuing in the right future. Now, given all the supply issues that, we're, COVID, having, that we're having right now, it's not a 2020 I'm project. not exactly like <laughs> jumping at the chance to do a subscription box. Yeah, unless, you know, like somebody mentioned True Fay, like we're aware of their box. Mm -hmm. we're, like, gotten it from they have myself, a couple different but, boxes. You know, um, you know, respect for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, they are actually doing it better than what we did when we first did it. Because theirs is all like <laughs> different stuff. Whereas when we did it, everyone got the same thing. Yeah. So, so trying to control the. We were trying to get enough of the same thing and predict it and that was what really was the hardest for us so with them you don't know what you're getting which kind of adds to the surprise i guess so it has um, to be priced right i think then, for me yeah. once you hit a certain price point fountain pens are so preferential like to choose the nib to choose the color to choose how it feels in the hand not everyone's willing to take that risk so it works really well with like lower price points but i think when you get up there it's it's yeah. not and like month after month after month i can see it being fun for like three to six months. A lot months, of people cancel subscription. And then you would I mean, cancel it. Yeah. So you're yeah. constantly churning through and, you know, so it's, it's a challenge. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that we're going to jump to do it anytime soon. Any news about a fix for a Curidas cracked feed? Um, I did hear that there were a few um, having to do with the way the nib um, was attached to the feed. Um, if you do have that issue, um, you know, under warranty, we, we can help set you up with, with a new one for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know long-term or like what Japan has done about it. I, I know, know they're, they're aware, aware of it, of it yeah. but I can't say for sure which, you know, what the situation is. So there, there's a very small chance if, you do get a curry dust that the feed has a crack in it, just let us know and we will we'll help you out. Well, I don't think it is. It's arriving with a crack in it. What it is is the, there's wings on the nib like the that nib. wrap around the feed. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're writing with pressure, that can put pressure on the feed and crack it. Yeah. So I think it's, and, and, I, and I can see, I have no actual knowledge coming from them. This is completely unofficial communication, but I could foresee how we here in the U.S., especially... We write with we a lower pen pressure. angle and we write with more pressure than they do in Japan. They write more upright and they're writing, you know, smaller, shorter strokes. So I could see where it'd be something that would not be an issue for them. And then all of a sudden the pens get to the U.S. and we're over here like mashing our nibs down. And then all of a sudden they're seeing problems. So that's that's why maybe some of that's coming up. A few other quick questions I can I can answer quickly. Does a Goulet nib fit on a Pilot Metropolitan? No. Nope. Um, they have proprietary no nibs. Way, no way, Are replacement nibs available for the Quaco Sport? Yes, and we do sell them. I don't know if they're in stock, but I know we sell them. Is there an up-to-date list on the blog that shows all the pens that have a Goulet nib fits? We do have a blog that we have updated. I don't know that it's 100% current. I would not say it's going to show all the pens. That I would I mean, in generally any Conklin or Monteverde number six, um, for sure, it should fit. Jin Hao number six. Just basically look for anything that's advertised as a number six, and there's a good chance it'll fit. I'll good say chance. as a, a general rule. The number the number six sizing across both Yovo and Bach, Bach. which makes the vast majority of They're pretty consistent. third-party nibs. 
Every once in a while you'll have like a curvature issue, but for the most part, they're pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm saving for my grail pen, a homo sapiens magma. That's a great grail pen. My handwriting is sort of small. I love my Edison stub. I assume probably like a 1.1. Mm -hmm. Would the homo sapiens be too wet with a stub? Um, and then the second question, can the nibs be replaced in the homo sapiens? So what I'll say about the homo sapiens is their stub, stub is a wet. one, it's a 1.3. It's a big stub. So it's a big stub and it's wet. Um, I think if you have small handwriting, it might be a bit big for you. I think yeah. if you normally write with uh, medium to broad nibs um, with like larger handwriting, I think you'll like it. Even for me, the 1.3 is a little on the wide side mm -hmm. and I, I usually go with broad. So in fact, we've gotten some some CSI nibs ground from Mark Bacchus. That's the, um, the cursive smooth italic. That's his, you know, it's, it's sort, sort of, like a sort of a stub. It's a little bit sharper edges. So you get a little more defined, but we've done it in both the medium and broad size and mm -hmm. fine uh, mm -hmm. as well. Uh, the broad wasn't all that popular, honestly. No, um, but they're the just so medium wet. Medium was a little more popular to find as well. So um, technically, yes, the nibs can be replaced. They do require, or we highly recommend using a special tool that isn't like available to the public because it is really mm. easy to mess up those nibs and feeds um, yeah. in the change out process. Nibs aren't cheap either. They're like three hundred and sixty dollars or something. So that might be something you'd want to work through the distributor Nuts. if you're looking to do a nib change out. I know they can like help you do that. It's possible. It is possible but it's not like a DIY easy hack. And yeah, they yeah. are expensive. It's like 200 some bucks for a nib. Yeah. Um, okay, scroll down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sorry, going back to if you want the magma, if that is your grail pen and you want a stub but you think it's too broad, I would go with a medium or broad maybe and then look to get a custom ground. I highly recommend Mark Bacchus because he has done a lot of them. That way you can get an italic that's like a one point one millimeter like smaller that I think yeah. would suit your handwriting better. Yeah. Um, any plans for, oh, right now episodes of Colin. Colin doesn't work um, at Gilead Pens anymore. So no, he won't be in any future videos. Well, we we're have, not doing right now's right we're now. We're also not doing right now's. <laughs> we, we did have some uh, staff changeovers uh, earlier this year, kind of right as, as the COVID stuff was starting. Yeah, so not COVID related. Not COVID related, but the timing, but the timing was, was just... You know, and like, you know, you know so, so someone asked about Whitney, you know, she took another job too. So, you know, people come and go over, over the years. So check mm -hmm. our um, meet our team page on our website and you can see, um, I did get Alex on there, our new photographer. So mm -hmm. all of our um, current uh, team members are on there. We have a new person starting next week too. That's right. So that's exciting. That's right. Is there a difference between Faber-Castell and Graf von Faber-Castell? They are the same yeah. company, the, the, the same general company. Groff is kind of the um, more premium line and Faber-Castell design is also, you know, Faber-Castell mm. design is more the economical uh, line. So, you know, there's a difference in price point, there's a difference in materials used. So you'll find, um, you know, the sub two, three hundred dollar pens in the Faber design line and the three hundred dollar plus in the in the Groff. Yeah. It's and then there's art supplies and the, the pencils and the, they have a whole whole huge range of products but as yeah. far as the the two it's kind of like urban and jacques urban they're both mm -hmm. part of the same brand but one is more the premium line and one is more the, it's like Namiki, the everyday line it's yeah like Namiki, Namiki and, and pilot. pilot same it's company like, but the premium like line the Acura everyday line. and toyota you know old navy like same and company Gap. They, <laughs> are they still together are they the same company or limited which one am i thinking of yeah gap and Banana Republic, there's like the three tiers. Anyway. Okay. Either way. There's a lot of, same you, company, same but they, company. they have different It's for tiers, branding. Different tiers. Andrew M asked, $360. It's not for the nib tool. That's for, for the a nib. replacement Visconti nib. For a gold nib. Just to clarify that. The nib tool itself is not $360. Um, all right, let's see here. Blanket candy. What's your favorite ink property? Shading, sheen, shimmer, permanence, etc. Me personally, I like I like sheen. Probably my number one favorite though is shading. I like a really nice shading ink. Sailor Haha is in stock. Ellie cool. Ellie made something to show. You made something Come to on. show. Ellie's supposed to be in bed right now. Well, but... nine thirty is lights out, so she's still. Open. Oh, okay. So she's <laughs> working the system here. Hi dear. Show what you made. What did a you pen. make? You made a pen. And a Legos. Look at that, and it's blue. <gasps> I love it. I love it, Ellie. Did you make that for Can me? Can I show it up close to everybody? Yeah. Here's her pen. <laughs> the little cap comes off. That's so sweet, Ellie. Did you make that just now, tonight? Yeah. 
because you know we're doing the video. It's wonderful. <laughs> Can we keep it here for the rest of the video? Yeah. Thank you, Ellie. Good night. Good night. 930 lights out. <laughs> we're working on bedtimes right now. Yes. If you've watched any of these broadcasts in the last few weeks, you know that like as we're wrapping up at 10 o'clock at night, the kids are still quite awake and active. Um, we've been talking about starting to have a defined regular bedtime. <laughs> so we're getting there. Yeah, Lego pen, kind of cool. Obviously non-writing, but that's really sweet that our kids are thinking of pens like that. Oh my gosh. What ink for this? Yeah, good question. I don't know. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to show you something also that's adorable, but please don't ask us for these because you're not going to get it. You're going to get asked I'm probably gonna keep you're showing it now. No, but because I'm probably going to just keep them myself because they're so adorable. Yeah. But she wanted to write some thank you cards like the good old days because someone on Goulet Nation shared one they got. Oh, look at so her cute been, like, drawing. drawing. these little... <laughs> I love the way she does her eyes. And they're all different. This one's like crabs at a beach. I just love what she comes up with. The snowman. The snowman. After she did the snowman, she's like, why did I do a snowman? It's summertime. I was like, Here is a unicorn cat with wings. I love it. The elephant who's thinking of snow cones and cookies. This is the first one she did. It's a bird with a diamond and a heart. I love how she writes her name too. You should like keep these and scan them in and, you know. Well, and then she has them. this whole stack where she uh, wrote her name and then she's going to do different drawings. So we're going to save them for like super special orders or I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. They're just so cute. Yeah, we hate to let them go. We could turn them into stickers. We could have like Ellie stickers. We could figure something out. That's pretty adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Mama here. They're so cute. Yeah, shading inks. So Sailor Haha and Neko Yanagi are amazing multi-tonal shaders. I'm very in love with them right now. Yeah. yeah, these would be great new stickers. I mean, there might be people not don't understand they're drawn by like an eight-year-old and be like, "Wow, like, man, like, man they need some better artists at their place." <laughs> well, we don't really have a lot of artists on stuff right now, so you would have to have like LEH8 or something like that. H8, yeah. yeah. Um, Jean so asks, cute. flex nib, does the slit have to be aligned with the downward stroke and not at my normal cursive writing angle to keep even pressure on the tines? Uh, I'm trying to understand what exactly you're asking here. Does the slit have to be aligned with the downward stroke? Uh, generally speaking, yes, that is. So you should be in a pull motion. Um, so what you don't want is the slit to be going this direction or I guess like this direction and be like doing a stroke like that. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, like you, you, want, you want the pulling direction to be like that. Like if you're cutting with a knife, you want to cut, you know, right with the direction of the blade of the knife. Think about it like that. So that's, that's how you're going to get your best flexing. You know, otherwise you're essentially, you're pressing down, which the tipping, which is, think about it, the tipping is cut in half. So you have kind of a sharp edge on that tipping as you spread those tines. And if you're dragging it, in a different direction, you're gonna get scratchiness, you can throw it out of alignment, it's just not gonna be the way that it's made for. A um, Couple other questions, are we planning, because people are talking about like making these into stickers, which is adorable, are there plans to restock the Emerald of Chicken stickers? Um, not at this time, but we do have it's, the design, so it's we could, if there's interest, we could definitely stock them again, like we did the design, we just need to print them. We honestly, so we really wanted to do like a not a COVID sticker, but like a special sticker to kind of thank everyone who ordered from us during this time. But when we went to go, we we're going to design it. And then I was like, let me just check to make sure our suppliers are still, you know, open. And turns out like none of our sticker suppliers were shipping because yeah. I did talk about this a little last week when, uh, when you weren't here. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. There's different people here. So me. now they're, they're starting to get up to this. Now we're like thinking about stickers again, because we've had the yeah. same stickers for like we had intentions of changing out our stickers every like quarter. And I think we've had the same sticker since like last summer. It's just, it's it got more. deprioritized. And now with, you know, it just completely fell by the wayside. Or we're scale. thinking about bringing about book bookmarks maybe instead of stickers or, you know, other stuff. So think about like little swag for orders. Yeah. We actually had plans to do a whole like customer survey and all this kind of stuff. We were going to reevaluate all We still, we still all probably will, but. Yeah, anyway, but it's then we COVID do happened have, and just wrecked everything. We do have phone support. I, I won't say it's eight to five every day. Um, I think we have some reduced hours right now, but our phones do route so someone can be on their phone from home. So we do have phone support. We do mm -hmm. have live chat support, email support. Again, not 
maybe not the eight to five every single day, but uh, for sure, we'll, we'll get back to you soon as we can. Yeah. Benjamin here asked, does an Aurora Gochi nib compare to a typical architect grind? It's not exactly like an architect. It's similar in concept. If you're familiar with the Sailor Zoom nib, that's a little more what it's closer to. So um, it has sort of an architect kind of grind to it, but it's not, it's not perfectly straight all the way down. Um, so an architect is essentially like an italic nib that's reversed 90 degrees. So an italic nib is gonna have a thin cross stroke and a thick downstroke, but the architect is gonna be the opposite. It's gonna have a thick cross stroke and a thin downstroke, which looks really cool, especially if you're writing in print. Um, it's also known as a Hebrew nib, because I guess if you're writing in Hebrew, it, it, it gives it you know that, that look as well. Um, so uh, that's, that's really what the architect nib is, but the Gochian nib, it's, it's, it's like that, it's thinner, but it gets a little thicker based on how you uh, have the angle of the nib. It's, I can't even possibly do the hand motions to, to show what the shape of that nib tipping is. Um, but that is that is basically what it is, is a sailor zoom. It's pretty Interesting cool. Interesting stickers and bookmarks here. Interesting. Um, Pilot Custom 945. Yes, we will be carrying it in both black and vermilion. I believe um, we're looking at September or, or Q4. Um, September at the earliest. I'm pretty sure they said mid-September. But we'll say, you know, last four months of the year. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I think it's the 845, not the 945. What did I say? Eight, oh, 845. Yeah. yeah, it's the 845. Yeah. I don't know if there is a 945. It, the numbers get very confusing. I, I read that and I'm like, oh no, that, yeah, yeah 845. Yep, 845 as well. If there is a 945. I just read it and I, I then, didn't, no, 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 845. Okay. I have one actually. Ta-da. No, that's a justice. You love how the Kakano medium nib writes. My 580 fine is a much wetter writer, so less yeah. ink shows. Yeah, pilot nibs, especially the CR, are very fine. The medium is like a, you know, German fine or extra fine. You don't want thicker than the European fine, Japanese medium. Do you know of a Twisby equivalent nib or pen? So I would honestly go extra fine in the Twisby. Well, Maybe a Twisby, fine. Twisby doesn't use Japanese nibs. No, 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 I know. So they like the Kakano medium. Okay. The 580 fine is wetter. They don't want thicker than a European fine. Yeah, so I would go, I would go extra fine if you want to go thinner. Has the decimo line been discontinued? I keep hoping for a new one. No, it has not. In fact, part of why you haven't seen a new one in the US is for part of the 100th uh, anniversary big thing with Pilot, they came out with 20 decimal colors for the Japanese market. They did a lot for, for the Japanese market. So they're kind of focusing their resources there. VP, the vanishing point has been way more popular than the decimal in the US, but the decimal has been picking up steam. Mm -hmm. um, I was a big advocate for bringing that in a couple of years ago. And they're like, well, it's the same price. I'm like, I don't care. People still want it. It's not the same price. It's actually a little bit less, but um, we'll keep asking. I like, I like Paul's comment here. The formula for deciding enough fountain pens is N plus one. N is the current number of pens you have. It's always one more. <laughs> I think that's going to be my default answer when somebody asks me, what's what's your favorite pen? I'm going to say the next one. The next one. one. If it's you ask Dante one. or anyone else, what's your you know favorite pen you're working on? The next one. Um, uh, it, Rachel and Brian, which would you choose for your first golden pen? The Custom 74 or the VP? I think I would choose the Custom 74. I love both. I have both. I have multiples. I did choose both. the Custom 74. So but I like I the Custom 74. The VP is just, it's a different experience. VP is a great but pen. It's, the VP is a great pen in its own right. I really are, love how the Custom 74 writes. Yeah. It's got a bit more bounce to it. The Custom 74 is a bit more of a classic fountain pen. Like a golden, you know, classic golden fountain pen. The VP is kind of in its own category. Trying to decide between the Peniter Forged Carbon and the Pelican Suvran M815 Metal Striped, both medium thoughts. Oh, they are very different pens. Very different pens. I oh love. The Forged I love, Carbon is so cool. And like, I love how that, that material writes. is. But I love Pelican nibs too. Oh and, my gosh. And the filling mechanism. Well, the filling mechanism on the Forge Carbon. Both are limited too. editions. So, well, That's tough. I think both will be around for a little bit while longer now. It's definitely easier to get a Pelican. Like the, the Peniters, they have not made nearly as many of them. Well, so. the Pelican, the, the special, I don't know. That's a tough the one. The Metal Strike. Mm. I don't know how many of those they made, but Pelican's a bigger company than Peniter on the pen front. So, um, I would be I would be a little more inclined to go Forge Carbon personally. I just it's a super cool material. 
A good pen case with plenty of storage. We have quite a few options. Um, Brian, you can show your, if you want the most storage, the Girologio 96 pen case would be your way to go. Um, this is leather. It holds 96 pens in, as you can see. Many pens. Um, if I you want something, like a briefcase. if you want something a little more value, um, like, you know, especially the, uh, the price per pen, I guess, in the storage, the Monteverde, uh, 36, is it 36 pen case? 40, 36, 36 or 40. Which one? Sorry. The Monteverde pen case. That is 36. 36, um, is a really good value. If you, if you, you know, divide by the number of pens you can fit in it. So it's not leather. Um, that brings the price down a bit, mm -hmm. but you can get some people with, like, not leather. I have three of them. That's what I keep all my pens in. So one of them, you know, whatever. Um, will we be carrying the M800 limited Chinese edition 2020 demonstrator? I don't think, I don't think it's available to the U S market, but that sounds interesting. I've never heard anything about it. Uh, when are the Avatar Deluxe and the Grand Valetta Pneider coming? Last I heard was mid-May. Yes. So the Avatar Deluxe um, literally arrived today. We just need to photograph it um, because we don't have any pictures. So we are planning to launch that next week. Um, and then the uh, Pneider Le Grande Valetta full metal jacket. So that is the cartridge converter with steel nib as well as the piston with a gold nib. Um, they said it was about a week or two behind. So that, that should be here later this month as well. Um, Frank asks VP versus Dialog 3. Ooh. Both very cool pens for me. I think VP. the VP is a better value. It's definitely less expensive. But I think it's, it's just easier to use pen. the click than the, the twist. The, the Dialog 3 is a really cool feat of engineering. It's um, larger. But the VP is a little more practical. To pen, so. Yeah. But I have both. So I, the Lamy Gold it. Nibs are, are quite lush. The, that nib is pretty fantastic, but it dries out a little bit quicker than the VP. When will we get Gule notebooks with Tomoe River paper back in stock? Um, I'm sh assuming we're just waiting on a customs clearance or something. Like I know we're in contact with a manufacturer, but um, things have been a bit delayed coming out of Asia. So For sure. Yeah. Jacob asks, have I inked up the green ray yet? No, I have not. Mm. I have not inked it up yet. Do you have it to show off again? It's over here in the box. Yeah. I also have, we said we were going to go 30 minutes. I, know, I was just, I was already. literally about to remind you. <laughs> well, a different Jacob on here says I'm 30 minutes in. I just joined as, you know, nobody's dressed up. <laughs> Did I miss something? Oh, we're trying to get our kids to a normal bedtime. Our that's what happened. Bed. Yes. That's why they've been, you know, they've been pushing the limits. They like not going to sleep like at midnight and we're like, no. Yeah. We, is, we had consequences. For there's, that. A, there's a line <laughs> and it's been crossed and now we're bringing it back. Yeah, Joe, um, we actually talked about that like maybe five, 10 minutes ago. So if you watch the uh, the recording, you can hear what we, we said about that. Um, so we did answer that. Just um, Yeah, so I got the, this is the M1000 Green Ray, the Rodden Fantastic. And uh, I also have the Visconti Homo Sapiens Crystal Dreams that we can show. Oh yeah. I think it's just Crystal Pretty Dream, normal. just a singular dream. I keep wanting to say Crystal Dreams because I think of Crystal Chris Dreams. I think of Christmas Dreams from Trans Siberian. I know, Orchestra. I know. Exactly. It just like rolls off my brain. Have you picked an ink, or you haven't even thought about it yet? Uh, I think I might do Haha -ha in this one. Ooh. I think that would be fitting for yes. such a pen. So there you go. So it is. Oh, this just, lighting is terrible. It's it's not the best for showing this particular. There's thing. a certain angle where you can get it to look good. I just don't remember what it is. We had this problem yeah. last week. It's a it's a hard one to show oh, on a live a stream. It, it really clips a lot of the, the quality of the video. But in any case, you can just imagine. I mean, the, every single one of these pieces of abalone shell is completely solid. It's not broken up in any way. Ooh, King of Pens or Pelican mm -hmm. M1000. Ooh, you guys are asking all the tough questions tonight. That is a really tough Personal one. preference. <laughs> I'm just going to like just say it. Whatever you want. That's a really tough one. I do like the piston. I do like the piston of the M1000. That's a big deal to me. Um, but the King of Pens is really cool. It depends what you're talking about. If it's the Pro Gear King of Pens, I'm not quite as much into that one. I like the um, the round top a little better. Mm. I love to go again. I don't know why. We just haven't found the right color of the. That ha -ha's, have you found that ha is really difficult to flow and needs to be used in wet pens? What have you used it in even medium so flow that well? I mean, yeah, I put it in a broad and it was great. Um, I've used a glass dip pen with it too, but. Rachel um, knows never has a problem with flow issues in her Because she only uses Yeah, gushers. go ahead and show the, the Crystal Dream. 
Crystal dreams. This, this is coming oh. soon. I don't know if it's May or June. Um, Somewhere beyond. <laughs> I'm not going to do that one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know laughing. Oh, yeah. oh, my gosh. It's a, yeah. I don't know if they make a reality. I don't think it, well, if they do make a reality King of Pens, I don't think it's imported, but um, I, don't I, don't think do. it's a, I don't think it's a thing. That would be cool, though. I've never seen or heard of one. All right, so this is the- Can Anemmeister help for Pen with Flow issues? Absolutely. 100%. That's, that's, that's like what, what they, they do. do. All right, so this is the Crystal Dream. Dreama? Dreama. No, um, not Dreama, just Dream. I want to call it the Crystal Dreama just because it's more clarifying. So I have- all three of the different versions. I have the OG, I have the Skylight, and the Crystal Dream. So let's by talk OG, about the, he means original. This is the Homo, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. For those who don't know what we're talking about, OG means original gangster or original guard, depending on how you choose to define it. All right. So the cap and everything is exactly the same. Basaltic lava. Uh, it has the same clear center band yeah, that you have. In some of the stock images, it looks like it's silver, but it's a clear, it's a clear ring. It's a clear like, ring. People get confused. They're like, where's the second ink window? It's it's in here. It's clear. It's it's hard to it's hard to see, but I mean you can tell them normally it's got a it's got a bronze one. So mm -hmm. it's clear. And this lighting is just the worst. Anyway, so it's same clear ring as what you have on the um, skylight. But as you can see here, the skylight just has like a kind of a submarine like cutout window mm -hmm. here. And this one has a whole just straight up clearness happening all the way through it. Um, and what's interesting about the Crystal Dream, um, well, first off, it has this little cabochon in the back here that is. This is a very polarizing thing because some people are like, oh, my gosh, original as much lava as possible. Don't disrupt the lava. And other people that. are like, I want to see the ink. Being able to see the ink is cool. And the ink it's capacity a, it's is a higher double on reservoir. This. Uh, powerful. It's the double reservoir versus the single. The single you're getting just over one milliliter. This one you can get up to like three and a half. So it's a significant increase in ink capacity. And what's cool about this, as opposed to the regular, you know, Homo sapiens and even the skylight, which is a this is also a double reservoir, which is an improvement as well. It's got a filler knob on the back, which is fine. Like it's it's very functional. It's plenty big. This one is much larger, so it's a little easier to use. And you get to see this crystalness happening. You see the whole thing. All in the back here, which I think is really cool because I'm totally into like the demonstrator-ness and being yeah. able to see all the parts. Demonstrator-ness. So it's just a little more is hidden on this pen. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but um, I just, I dig the, the fact that it's like, there's more happening under here than you even realize at first. Um, so you still get the double reservoir action. So the nice thing about that is you get a large ink capacity, um, but when you travel with it, you can flip it up. You can let all the ink down in here. It kind of shuts off the ink supply and you get less of a chance of leaking and, and burping and that kind of stuff. Um, so the, the front reservoir in here holds about a regular converter's worth, which is about a half a milliliter. Um, so you can use that and keep it screwed down. It's not like a Twisby VAC 700 or, um, you know, the Pilot Custom 823, where it doesn't really have a reservoir in the front here. You pretty much only have the ink that's in the feed. So to use that and write with it for a decent amount, you have to unscrew the back kind of while you're writing with it. This one, you can write a really decent amount. Again, about as much as you can with a typical cartridge converter. A question about before whether you have to let any more ink the window makes it back heavy, more back heavy than the other one. Does the window make it back heavy? The, the pen overall feels a little bit lighter to me than a regular Homo sapiens, but I haven't done the weight measurements of this. Actually, I should do that. Um, and then Kevin, you asked about um, it's not a huge difference in weight. Said sorry honestly. if this is repeating, but orders are not shipping for now, right? So orders of new releases like the Diplomat Era Pink are effectively pre-orders for now. Um, we are shipping, shipping. We're just delayed. Um, I would guess if you ordered right now, your order will ship in about Reeves? two to three weeks. That would be my guess because we're projecting we're going to catch up by mid June, um, as long as we don't have like crazy spikes in the next three weeks and you know no one gets sick and you know all the knock on wood everything. Yeah. Um, I would guess maybe two to three weeks and we'll get out the door to you. Yeah, so we're, we're and then and then by and then shipping every day right now. Yeah, we have seven days a week, multiple people in the building. Um, we're just catching up. We're from catching up. Not having shipped for six to seven weeks. Most of April, some of May's orders are starting to go out. Um, mm -hmm. And again, if you haven't got your shipping notice, don't despair. Like we're checking everything. There's just stuff in different batches and whatever. Yeah. Um, 
but we will catch up by mid-June. So yes, you are ordering this. We will take your money and we will ship it to you in two or three weeks. That's a good question from Emily. Journaling gift pen, or sorry, journaling pen gift suggestions for former calligrapher, 150 or under. So people who are former calligraphers might appreciate a stub nib. Mm -hmm. That's just something that it, or flex it nib. looks a little more a flex nib, maybe true. Um, those tend to be a little more finicky. Um, but I would think that a, a stub nib is a pretty safe bet. Calligraphers do tend to like those when first getting over to a fountain because it looks a little more calligraphy. Um, so, oh gosh, 150 and under. What's got a good stub for 150? Um, I'm trying to think. There's a lot of options. It is a lot of options. I mean, all of the Conklin and Monteverde have a Yobo stub now. That's true. The Yobo stubs are pretty fantastic. Twisby's got some decent stubs. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's going to be a crapshoot whether a Twisby such a modern looking pen. I don't mm -hmm. know if a hardcore calligrapher would like the modern aspect or think that it's just too much. So that might be a bit of a gamble. Um, but there could be some, I'm thinking like a Conklin Duragraph type thing. It looks like more of a vintage pen with a stub could be, could be a good option. Yeah, Dipple that Magnum would, could be really good because that's also a very thin kind of light pen, which a calligrapher might be used to in, in a traditional Pilot pen. Parallels, that'd be fun too. Holder. Pilot Parallel for sure. And we have a gift set that'd actually sure. be very, very gifty. Yeah, they're long, they're thin, the plumix. they're light. We have plumix. Thank plumix. you, Crystal. Uh, yeah. We have Plumix gift sets as well. They come with like two pen, two or three pens and like different ink to go with it. Yeah. Um, and yes, uh, all of assurances, we are being safe with our shipping. Like, oh my gosh, our our you know, temperature checks and masks at all times and hand sanitizer, sanitizer and like one person in the bathroom on the hour time. for the team and all the things. Everybody wears a mask at all points in the building. You, know. you only pick and ship your own orders and you have your own take like we've whew, we could, kid, we could kid, bore you to death. The kitchen is closed. The There's no taken. coffee right now. Like we are being very, very, very cautious. Um, we're doing more. Virginia's. Brian running. gets his temperature checked if he and he has to call the leader on site if he needs to stop into the building. Yeah, I, I can't go in. I don't go into the building if anyone else is there. I don't go into the building uh, without getting my temperature checked and waiting until I have permission to do so. Yeah, so, I've given that authority to the leader. That we so have we are we're following we're Virginia that. guidance. We're probably on the oversight of caution, but yes, sure. we would definitely be insane. We are overly cautious. Um, getting some questions on the diamond ink vent. Yes, I believe they were scheduled yeah. to arrive to our office today or tomorrow. I think the shipment we got didn't get split them all. up. We, the shipment got yeah. Split up. So then we need to photograph the bottles, which um, will be happening probably, uh, let's see. We should be launching those, I'll say by like mid next week. So they're all swab and they're gorgeous. I actually just did ink reviews of all of Come them. On, we got Trevor in here too. I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah. Who's in? What's up, Trevor? I have, there. I have my, <laughs> oh, I actually did them on Tumboy too, so they look even cooler. Oh, you got to show them up. It's not going to look great on the, no, it's not. On the video, but These that's okay. are um, the shimmer inks. So there's blue peppermint, gold star, uh, snow. I'm trying to read this like backwards in cursive. It's very hard. Snowstorm and solstice. So there you go. You can see some sparkle. While you're showing that off, Vincent Then says, I got the sheening. So these are the sheeners. I got festive cheer, holly, midnight hour, Noel, polar glow, and seasons greeting. So let's see if I can get some of that sheen to show. Y'all keep asking such good questions. Oh, there you go. There's there's that sheen. Here we got Brandon. We got Micah in here. We got we got like half the team. In there. And then awesome. these are the <laughs> shimmer and sheeners. Um, so we got happy holidays, Jack Frost, and winter miracles. Let's see if I can get. This lighting. This is like a purple down here with this crazy sheen and shimmer. Look at these. Ah! Awesome. And I did like ink reviews of all of them too. Oh yeah. I always like how like my drip test ends up looking like this like like face that's just not like yeah. no emotions, you know. But anyway, so that's exciting. Yes. We're totally going way over 30 minutes, but there's so many good questions. And Susan's in here too. We, Vincent, got, we got all kinds of people. We got a lot of our team in here. That's awesome. I have a pilot E95S and love the nib. Which pen will give me a similar or better experience of Pilot Custom 74 or the Falcon with a soft nib? The Falcon with a soft nib would be softer because the E95S nib is a little bit soft. It's not, you know, labeled as a soft nib, but it does have some bounce to it. Oops, You'll sorry, get that with a Custom 74, which I do also enjoy. But I think if you like 
the bounciness aspect of the E95S, and it's a little smaller, lighter pen, then the Falcon would be the way to go for you. Is there a diamine in lilac? There's lilac night and lilac satin. Um, lilac satin is a shimmer color, and lilac night is like a, a darker purple color. Is there another lilac? I don't think so. Mm. Is there one in the flower series? Mm, no, I don't think so. Can't record. Hmm. They've so Diamine, many they also colors. make a lot of inks for like regions and, and retailers and stuff. So I might be missing something, but yeah. So those will be here next week. We got a lot, like our new products are really starting to pick up. So they we are. have, um, yeah. yeah, like the Avatar Deluxe and we, oh, we got stuff that isn't even on the site yet. Cause I have to get pictures and all the things. And we said we would finish this 20 minutes ago. So we, we should, indeed. we, we did should indeed. go, you know, do rest for something <laughs> go do rest i'm tired <laughs> rachel clearly needs to take a take it she needs to go do rest <laughs> it's all good well all right we'll cut it off if here. you guys have Thank any additional all. questions that either we didn't answer or you just would like help with our customer relationship team is ready willing they're all working from home but they're they're happy to help especially if you have any troubleshooting mm -hmm. questions if you're like i can't decide between this and this if what color matches, whatever they're, they're happy to help. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, you're welcome, Sharon. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for supporting our team during this time. Thank you because half the people in the chat are our team. Thank <laughs> you all. We love you guys. You're working really hard. So glad to be getting some sense of normalcy again. Uh, whatever that means these days. Uh, thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening and uh, we'll see y'all later. Bye. Right on. You're very welcome for doing this. Bye, everybody. <laughs>